First phase of the German Enlightenment, we have the likes of Tomasi. The second phase, we have the likes of Wolf. <laughs> now, let's talk about the deists. The deists we've talked about before were sort of like those who believed in God as the watchmaker, right? The clockmaker, where God created the world at the beginning of time and created it with all sorts of rules of how it would work, how it would tick, and then God just let it go. The rise in deism in Germany, Hermann Samuel Remares, Remares, we heard that we studied his name back in our course on Christology. Do you remember Remares and Christology? His works were published posthumously, which means after his death. So he wrote all these things, nothing was published during his lifetime. After he died, then along came Gotthold Ephraim Lessing, who published his works. And Reimarus in his works said that modern thought shows us the world, shows us that the world is causally interconnected and mechanical. And so because of that, we can throw out anything that was miraculous or anything that was from revelation because the world is like a machine. Follow me? And so when some, someone comes in saying that God spoke to them, that's not how God works. God created the world at the beginning of time with all the flaws and set it go. God doesn't come in and tinker with the world after that. Follow me? God doesn't come in and speak to people. God created at the beginning and let it go. What does that do for the place of God in the world? Do you remember that Rymaris, we heard his name back in our study of Christology, so let's just to, to re, stop to remind ourselves what we talked about before about Rymaris. Rymaris was the one, he was the first one to discard revelation, right? Things like the Bible. You can throw the Bible out the window. Or at least, let's take a look at the Bible and see if we can discover the real Jesus in the Bible. What do you mean the real Jesus? Well, anything that's miraculous, Jesus didn't do. Got news for you. God created this world with certain laws. And for instance, when it comes to the, the, the law of buoyancy force, it is impossible to walk on water. Take out your pen, take out your Bible, scratch out that line out of your Bible. Follow me? Let's get to the real Jesus. Rymaris, the one that came to various conclusions, he said, Jesus was a Jew, that's obvious. He didn't intend to found a new religion. Instead, he was more of a moral teacher, a failed political messiah, clashed with the Roman authorities, and after he died of failure, his disciples stole his body, waited for a little while, the mark and secret, and then came out with how it was that Jesus was the messiah. That was his way of explaining Jesus and the faith. So that for him, we remember back in our course on Christology, we distinguished between the Jesus of history and the Christ of faith. It was Rymaris who was being in distinguishing the two. As Christians, we tend to believe that the Christ of faith is tied to the Jesus of history. The Christ of faith is the Jesus of history. He was like, no, 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 no. Let's set. There's the Jesus of history, the guy who died of failure and whose body was stolen. And there's the Christ of faith, the stories that were made up about him. That was difficult for us as a church. So that was Rymaris. He, he suggested that miracles are unworthy of God. Why are miracles unworthy of God? Because God created the world with all these laws that it would operate by. So why would God step in and take away those laws? Follow me? There's a law that you cannot walk on water. Why would God come in and suspend that law? He created the world with those laws. When he created the watch. When he created the clock. He said, God achieves God's purposes through a rationally intelligible system through the clock of this world. Why would God upset the, the natural laws of this world when God created those laws? 